Hello, I'm Lisa Spooner, and this clip on public key infrastructure is from my CompTIA Security Plus training course. Enjoy! PKI is a two-key encryption system. Having two keys, the word for that is asymmetric. Now, it's important to note that PKI is a framework, like a guideline, that different systems, vendors, and technologies can interpret and use to provide authentication and confidentiality in their data transmissions. So it's a set of rules, right? And one being that you have to have two keys. The key length is up to you. The encryption algorithm you use is up to you. But you have to have those two keys. So PKI provides confidentiality with that encryption. And it provides authentication with the use of digital certificates, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first, let's start with those two keys. So let's say you want to send a secure message to Alice. Now, Alice has a key pair, a public key and a private key. And those two keys are mathematically related. They were created by a special algorithm at the same time. So let's see how this works. You request Alice's public key. Now, that's public, meaning anyone can see it, anyone can have it. So she sends it to you. Then you use that public key to encrypt the message that you want to send to Alice, and you send it back. Now, so far, not so secure sounding, right? No, just wait. Anything encrypted with this public key cannot be decrypted with that same key. It has to be decrypted with the pair to it, the private key, which only Alice has. So she uses that private key to decrypt the message and read it. Now, this is great for confidentiality, right? Nobody can intercept that message in between and decrypt it because they don't have Alice's private key. But how do we really authenticate? I mean, someone could be pretending to be Alice using a different public-private key pair, send you their public key, decrypt the message with the private key, and you'd never be the wiser. Well, that's where digital certificates come in. So now we get to authentication. Digital certificates associate a particular public key with an individual, a company, an organization, whoever it is that owns that public key. Digital certificates are issued by a certificate authority. So what's contained in those certs? Well, a common certificate standard is the X.509, and it contains fields like when is a cert valid, not before this date, not after this date, what algorithm is used for encryption, what's the public key, that one's important, right? Oh, and the issuer. That's that certificate authority. Let's talk about that now. A certificate authority is a server responsible for issuing, revoking, and distributing digital certificates. This is often a trusted third-party organization. Commercial examples are DigiCert and VeriSign. But companies and organizations can create their own in-house CA. For example, the Windows Server products offer tools to create a local certificate authority. The CA also stores the public keys in a directory that is available to anyone that wants to verify your certificate. Now that we have added the CA, that secure message transfer gets even better. Again, you want to send a message to Alice. Here's how it would look using public key infrastructure. Alice has already registered and has a digital certificate from the CA. You request Alice's certificate from the CA. Remember, one of the CA's responsibilities is distributing the certs. Or Alice could send it to herself. It's public. How we know it actually belongs to Alice is that it's signed by the CA. And we trust the CA. So you get the certificate. You encrypt your message using Alice's now verified public key that's contained within the cert. You send it to Alice. No one can decrypt it along the way without Alice's private key. She uses that private key, decrypts the message, reads it. Now, I know that I said that we'll be talking about PKI implementations in a future lesson. But I just wanted to show you real quick a place where PKI is used in our daily lives. Come with me. 
Public key infrastructure is used all over the web in the form of SSL certificates. Now, verifying who you're interacting with is especially important when shopping online. So here I am at trainsignal.com, and if I add a product to my cart and begin the checkout process, if I right click on the checkout page, click Properties, and then certificates, I can see that SSL cert. If I go to details, here's version three of that X.509 standard I was talking about. There's a ton of information here. The issuer is VeriSign. The subject is actually who owns the cert, that's train signal. And here's that public key. Okay, I just wanted to give you a quick peek. Let's go back.